Hello everyone, I'm Jensen, your digital content producer. It is Monday, August 3rd, and I'm just gonna give you a bit of an update on some of the top headlines from over the weekend and from today. So we're gonna get you all caught up. I'm gonna touch on the next relief bill, which hasn't made much headway yet, but I'll share what we do know about that process. Plus, we're gonna give you an insight on some new coronavirus numbers from the Ohio Department of Health and what's happening with Ohio High School Athletics. Plus, there's some new information coming out of Toledo City Council today that I think you should know. So before we dive too deep into anything else, let's look at some of that data. So good news is overall, things are pretty much down across the board. Over the last 24 hours, there have been 932 new cases of coronavirus, which is well below the 21-day average of 1,291. There have unfortunately been 10 new coronavirus-related deaths in the last day, but that's again a lot lower than the average uh, over the last 21 days has been at 23. We've also had 92 new hospitalizations and 10 new ICU admissions, which are both again below that average. So. Good news for us, but our positivity rate is slightly higher than normal at 5.6% and the World Health Organization's threshold is at 5%. So something we might just wanna keep a bit of an eye on. But let's pivot here and take a look at what's going on with Ohio High School Athletics. On Saturday, the Ohio Department of Health extended the expiration date of its second amended order providing guidance for contact sport practices, non-contact sport competitions, and contact competitions with exceptions. So what exactly qualifies as a contact sport, you may ask? Well, the health department did provide a little bit of guidance. They clarified the following sports qualify. Football, basketball, rugby, field hockey, soccer, lacrosse, wrestling, hockey, boxing, futsal, and martial arts with opponents. So per this new order, these sports were able to start practices as of August 1st with competition limited to intra-club or squad competition unless the competition is done in compliance of Section 10 of that new order. And Section 10 reads, a COVID-19 test must be administered to each athlete and team staff member participating in the competition no more than 72 hours prior to the start of the competition with results in hand prior to the start of that competition. Plus, the ruling bans spectators from competitive interclub slash team play. But the Ohio High School Athletic Association is pushing back a bit on this guidance with leaders asking the health department to reconsider and modify some of these protocols. So on Sunday, OHSAA released a statement saying they are working to clarify some of these details with the Ohio Department of Health. And once those details are confirmed, leaders will be issuing a memo to school administrators and share it online. Locally, however, Toledo Public Schools have already made the decision to postpone fall sports until October 1st, where they would reevaluate and look at what the situation is then. Now let's look a little bit closer at some things happening here in Northwest Ohio. Toledo City Council just gave the okay to put two tax issues before voters in November. The city's existing three quarters percent tax and a new one quarter percent tax intended solely for road repairs. So there was initially some debate over whether or not this vote would be valid because despite accepting the suspension from his position on city council, Larry Sykes did attend the meeting Monday and he did vote. Although according to Attorney General Dave Yost, there was some delay in communication with Sykes' attorney. So he was unaware that his suspension had become official and that's why he went on Monday. And in case you need a bit of a refresher, uh, Sykes is facing federal charges for his alleged involvement in a bribes for votes scheme that includes three other city council members and one local attorney. So the four council members were officially suspended on Friday. And according to city council, President Matt Cherry Sykes was not supposed to be there. But council was able to simply strike Sykes votes from the record and the results remain the same. So here's what you'll be voting on in November the existing three quarters percent municipal tax funds, Toledo Police, Toledo Fire, and other elements of the safety department. Plus it goes into the city's general and capital improvement funds. This is set to expire on December 31st. And so the language of the ballot would extend this to December 31st, 2024. The new one quarter percent municipal income tax would also be in effect until December 31st, 2024. And this would provide funds to improve the city's roads, streets, and bridges. The council also voted on Monday to ensure that full health insurance benefits will 
be continued to be paid uninterrupted to fallen TPD officer Anthony Diaz's wife and children until other benefits to which the Diaz family is entitled becomes available or until the, ch the children reach adulthood. And before I get out of here, let me touch base with you on what's happening with the next stimulus package. So both sides have put forth a plan, but an agreement seems like it is kind of far away. And the Senate is set for another recess from August 10th until September 7th. So if we want anything to come through before Labor Day, time is of the essence. So at this point, areas of agreement include another $1,200 direct payment and changes to the Paycheck Protection Program to permit especially hard hit businesses to get another loan under generous forgiveness terms. But the terms and structure of the unemployment benefit remains a major point of contention here. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi did say she'd consider reducing the $600 benefit for states with lower unemployment rates, but Republicans want to cut the benefit significantly in an effort to encourage beneficiaries to return back into the workforce. Another sticking point seems to be that Republicans want to give more aid to schools that are starting the year in person, uh, although Dr. Deborah Burks, Trump's top coronavirus advisor, has cautioned that schools in areas with spikes in cases should really be delaying reopening. But we'll keep you updated on air and online as soon as both sides come to some sort of agreement and when the next stimulus package is signed. But that's all I have for you today. If you have questions, you can always send us a text message at 419-248-1100. You can comment here. I'll be checking those. And I'll be doing these updates daily at around 4.30. So check back for your daily headlines. But with all of that out there and being said, I hope you have a happy Monday.